deciding what I want to do um, in regards to like November and stuff like that. So that's been kind of a weight on my shoulders a little bit because um, I don't know if January would be waiting a little bit too long or if I want to go ahead and just apply with what I have. But um, so yeah, that's kind of been what's going on. And then personal statements, getting that stuff done. And obviously everybody has like, oh, I'll just edit it for you. You don't even also just in regards to like the LSAT, I think that, cause I've been studying for it for, for a while. I think that I always just kind of imagined that I was gonna take it in person. And I feel like I've kind of realized that I'm better taking tests, like going somewhere and taking the test. I feel like the whole at home thing just doesn't feel as real. But with the LSAT, I feel like it's just, it's been a lot of just figuring out what works for me and trying to become a faster reader, sub vocalization, you know, the economist, all of that. So yeah, so it's a little bit of everything. Sure, sure. Glad to help. So first off, November versus January, I get a lot of questions about that lately. The good news is that January is totally fine. It's totally fine. If you're going into November in this final week and feeling like you're not where you want to be, if you feel like you have a lot greater potential with a bit more time, the additional two months can make a big, big difference. Yeah. So I would strongly recommend that you go for January instead if, as we're in this final week, you're just feeling like you're not where you want to be. Okay. It's okay. And, um, should I go ahead and already apply with my last one? Because my last one's not like amazing, but it's not like horrible either. I would hold off because January you could do significantly better. You'd want them to consider you with that score, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I would hold off. You can get everything else ready in the meantime on the side as a break from your LSAT prep, work on the personal statement, any other essays you're going to submit. But don't hit submit until you get the January score back because you don't want them to consider you without that score. So you don't think that if I'm one of like the splitter people that it wouldn't be too big of a deal? Not a big deal at all. This cycle is a little bit weird in part due to COVID. January is perfectly fine. I wouldn't even say it's late anymore. I might've said that six months ago. I might've said that a year or two ago, but in my discussions with admissions folks, that's the latest. As I speak now in early November, this is the latest. January is totally fine. Okay, cool. Because I feel like that's just been something that I really wasn't sure about. I didn't want to hold off because um, I've already taken it twice. So I remembered you said if I took the November, that would be my three. Yeah. And were those other two takes? When were those specifically? Um, so I took the August and that's when I had my proctor issue. And then I took the October. So the next one's going to be your third, your last yeah. one for this cycle. So I would recommend not taking November, definitely taking January. I feel even more strongly about that, knowing the context. Okay. Perfect. So I'll probably go ahead and switch that because it's, it's definitely because I think I'm on like the 10th to take it. Um, and it's not that I feel like not ready. It's just more the fact that I want to make sure that I can get it as high as I possibly can. So it's kind of just like a, uh, maybe I should hold off. But so yeah, I think probably holding off. Fantastic. Awesome. And those two months, I mean, I've seen how you show up in class. You really give it your all. You're very diligent and you understand this test better than most people. So I think with the extra two months, you could do far, far better with the extra time. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. That just makes me feel a lot better because I feel like it, it's definitely something that's like, you should have apps in by December. And it was like, okay, <laughs> what about January? So that makes me feel a lot better, but that's good to know. I think I'm definitely going to do that today and switch it. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Now, you also said that you're thinking about the applications, the personal statement, and you're considering which route you want to go to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, what questions do you have for me around it? Um, so, cause I went to your, uh, workshop where we went through and we like looked at, um, people's personal statements and we kind of picked like what was wrong with it. Well, not wrong with it, but what needed to be changed, what needed to be, um, different, what we didn't like about it, what we liked about it. And I felt like that was super helpful because it kind of gave me more of like a, 
this is what they're looking for. Maybe stay away from quotes, stay away from these things. Um, but do you think, uh, I've always been like a naturally stronger writer. Um, I was a history major, so lots of writing, lots of, lots of essays. Um, my only like, I guess, concern is if I have people like my friends and well, not like, like other, like law school people, things like that, if they were able to help me, um, I just don't know if you think that going ahead and getting like a service or something where they do this all the time could maybe be beneficial, even if it is a little pricey, but it, cause as you've said, the personal statement really does show you kind of who I am outside of just my numbers and everything. So yeah. Yeah. Good question. I mean, there are lots of fantastic former admission officers who offer admissions coaching. I offer admissions coaching one-on-one -on -one, and I'm doing plenty of that in the course as well. So I guess the question is how good can you get it with the free and lower cost options for revision before going for a higher priced option? Mm -hmm. So of course you can have those in the, like law students and such help you out with it. We can workshop it in the course and you'll get feedback from me and others on it there. And then if you still feel like you want to go significantly beyond that, then I would look into one of the, the higher priced options for getting some one-on-one -on -one support. But I would see how far, since you have access to the course, you have access to these application essay workshops that we're doing, where you can get feedback from pre-laws who may not have all the knowledge, but many of whom are great writers who can look at it with a critical eye and don't know you personally. You get anonymous feedback because they don't know that it's your statement. So they'll feel a bit more comfortable being honest about it. And I always feel comfortable being honest about these statements. I don't think it's serving anyone by telling you it's great when there's still a lot of work that can be done. Yeah. But you've got access to the course anyway, so why not? workshop it there first and see where it goes okay perfect i'll definitely do that and then um oh another thing um i've been watching a lot of your um tidbits and like little youtube videos about um addendums and so my gpa is not like a horrible gpa but definitely freshman year i was going through some things and so my gpa in that sense um it definitely knocked me down after that which i know you've talked about like how was like the was it like at the end you were bad? Like, no, it definitely shows that like towards the end, like it was, I did really, really well. Um, so in the addendum, uh, do I need to really talk about what exactly, cause I don't want it to be a sob story either. Like, oh, feel bad for me. I want it just to be more of like a, hey, these are the facts, this is what happened. Should I include like, as you can see, like, towards the end, I did much better? Or should it just be explaining what exactly happened during this time and why I didn't, you know, do the best of my abilities? I would point out the upward trend. Okay. Make it, make it clear, make it obvious. They can, of course, they can look at your transcript, but don't make them do that work and that analysis. You can take just a, a, quick, a quick sentence or two to point that out. So okay. the before, after. While I had this issue going on freshman year, grades were lower. After that issue was resolved, grades were higher. Therefore, they don't need to be concerned about it going forward. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because that was just something that I wasn't sure how to like approach it, I guess, because I definitely didn't want it to be, because I, I did see um, one of them uh, with one of the law school people and they were just like, please don't make it a story, like make it straight to the point, concise, just tell us what happened. So I was like, okay, but do I need to tell you like, hey, look, I'm doing a lot better now. So that was the only thing, but. Yeah, well, that you're doing a lot better now can still be a matter of fact, concise thing. You don't want to just start laundry listing excuses and giving lots of narrative yeah. in an addendum. So I would agree. I would agree with their take on it as well. Just like, don't be too flowery about it. Be direct okay. to the point, concise. Okay, perfect. Um and then, so addendums are just in regards to, you know, something on your transcript that looks questionable or anything like that, correct? I'd say probably the most common ones are GPA addenda that I see. There's also, folks will often sometimes write an LSAT addendum. And then if there's anything else you need to tell them or want to tell them that can't be covered elsewhere, you can often write an optional essay as well. Um, do you think I should make a LSAT addendum because I've taken it, well, I will be taking it three times? You can, if you want, you said, you mentioned that the August LSAT, there were proctor issues, right? So yes. if you wanted to, you could 
say something very concise about it. Mm -hmm. If you already have a GPA addendum, though, you may not want to do an extra yeah. addendum for that. <laughs> Especially, I mean, in that last year in, when there was the digital LSAT transition to the tablet format, lots of tech issues there. Same with the LSAT Flex, lots of issues here as well. So they're, they're aware of the transitional LSAT format issues. So you don't need to do one. People often like to because it makes you feel better as an applicant to say yeah. <laughs> that. I don't think it needs to be a, a huge question. I think August, October, January, it's not like they're three consecutive months. Yeah. August and October were consecutive administrations, but you're allowing more time for January. So I wouldn't say that you have to do it. Okay. I just, yeah, I don't want to, you know, explain everything to a T too. And they're just gonna be like, wow, like she really explained <laughs> everything. Like, I don't want that either. Yeah. If, you, but, if it was really concise, it would be okay. But I don't think that you need to, I'd say it's a toss up either way. You can do it. You cannot do it. It's up to you. Okay. Um, trying to think, trying to think. This is very helpful. Um, but yeah, the course has been really, really good. Um, especially the the one on one. Well, it's not one on one, but it's like the the group aspect. It's extremely helpful because I feel like we're able to get our questions out. And like, um, I had done a couple other courses, but this has been like the first one where it's like a very kind of hands on. And I feel like it's definitely helped with like my approach. And also, I was really nervous doing the logic games thing, but it also was like reassuring, like, okay, I actually know what I'm doing, at least in like one of the sections, you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like my main thing probably going into Janu January is just really, really, um, I've been honing in definitely on the harder logic games, but I think um, with the, uh, LR, I've definitely been like splitting them up into the types of questions and really trying to figure out which ones are getting me stuck and like which ones I feel like I'm just wasting so much time on. But reading comprehension, I just, I'm trying my best to read The Economist, which has been super helpful because those are very dense and heavy. Um, but the sub vocalization, that's something that I've kind of been looking into because I saw on yours, it was like Spreeder. Um, yeah, I've also been trying to listen to like podcasts faster so that like my brain is processing things faster. So I'm hoping I'm hoping those help. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you've been finding the course useful. It's been fantastic to have you in it. Your presentation was great on logic games. And I, that's part of why I do those presentations to let students build their confidence and show that you've got it and learn by teaching as well. And so if you ever wanted to do one on reading comprehension, I'd be happy to have you do that too. And come to the reading comp deep dives. We've been running pretty consistently. Those have been great. I'm doing another one tonight. And that's a place where we can talk about things like the sub vocalization as well. We can always bring that in and bring okay. in just ways to more deeply understand the passage and find those key portions that really just break it wide open. Okay. Well, I will be there. Fantastic. Well, it was great connecting with you, Jessica. Keep at it and I'll see you then. Thank you so much. Of course. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.